this episode, we're going to look at playing around with some different Active Record tricks. And to start off, let's have a look at our application. We have a model users, and the users belongs to the status, and it also has many messages. And then our status has many users, and the message belongs to the user. And if we look at the schema, our users has a first name, last name, email, and then a status ID. The statuses table has a name and a boolean for active. And the active can be true or false, and it defaults to false. And then the messages has a user ID, a content to store the messages, and then a boolean to see if the message has been read or if it's still unread. And the read boolean defaults to false. And then in the seeds RB file, I'll create an initial seed with some data. I'm creating two statuses, one that is active, and the active attribute is set to true. And then I'm creating another status called inactive, and its active attribute is set to false. I'm then creating 20 users, and when setting the user status, I'm just getting a sample, which is going to be a random selection from the available statuses. I'm then going through and creating 100 messages, and the messages are going to be assigned to a random user. It's generating some fake data, and I'm going to set the message read to a true or false, and it's just going to be a random sample. All right, so to get started, I'll run Rails DB migrate, and then I'll also run Rails DB seed. And notice that I am running the migration and the seed in the same line, and that's something that you're able to do with break tasks. You could also do something like a Rails DB create, DB migrate, and DB seed, all from the same line, and it's going to go through and do its thing, and it did seed the database, it just didn't show any kind of output. So then we'll launch the Rails console, and we can do a user count. We see we have our 20 users. We can do a status count. We get our two statuses, and then we can do a message count, and we have our 100 messages. So let's say if we have a problem now where we want to get a list of all of our active users. So let's say we have a active statuses, and we set this equal to the status where the active is set to true. So now we have our collection of all these statuses that are true, but we don't need all of the fields for the statuses. So we could do something like the same thing, except now we add pluck and we just want to return the ID and we should just get a array back. And notice that the difference in the queries is the first one is selecting statuses and all columns. So whenever you see this asterisk on the statuses dot, that's going to return all columns, and that's unnecessary, and it's a bit of overhead that's not needed. We don't need the name attribute or the active attribute, or as well as the timestamps. Instead, we're just concerned about the ID where the active status is set to true. On the second query, where we ran the pluck, you can see that we only selected the statuses ID from the statuses table where the active is set to one or true. And instead of getting back a active record collection or relation, this time we got back just an array. So now that we have an array of IDs of our active statuses, we can call the active users is equal to the user dot where, and we want to find where the status ID is set to the array of the active statuses. And if we have multiple active statuses in this array, then we can still pass it in like this, and it will return our list of records. And we can call dot size on the end here to just see what the count is so we have 10 active users. However, I think that there is a much better way, instead of running two separate lines of code or queries to do this, we could do something like a user.joins, and we're going to join the status table. And from here, within our query, we can then reference the statuses, and we want to find where all the statuses has the active set to true. And so now you can see that we ran just one query, and this one query did a inner join on the statuses, and it still performed the query where the active status is true. If we get a size on this, we can see that we still have our 10 users. So while this query is good and efficient, and it only makes one call out to the database, I still think that this can be cleaned up a bit. Because realistically, when you are using this in your application, you don't want to have to have this replicated code over multiple places in your application. And this does seem like one of the type of things that you would be calling multiple times throughout the application. And a scope is basically a class method that you can call with self dot, and we'll call this active. And then we'll call the where, and then the active is set to true. 
However, on single lines, I really don't like using a class method like this. Instead, I'll actually create a scope, and the scope I'll call active again, and then I'll create a lambda, and within the lambda, I can call the where the active is set to true. And this is going to do the same thing as the class method. And the difference between a class method and a instance method, an instance method would be something like def active, and then it's going to return something like this. And the main difference is you can call status side active, and it's going to return a active record collection of all these statuses that have the active set to true. With a instance method, you would have to first call the status maybe dot first to get the first record, and then you can call active. So this isn't really applicable in our case because we're not dealing with one record, we're dealing with our collection of records. So now if we were to call status side active, you'll see that it doesn't work because we haven't reloaded our console. So instead we need to call reload with the bang first, and this is going to reload the Rails application. We can then call the status.active, and then we get our active record collection. So now that we know that we have the status active to get our active statuses, let's try to see if we can change something like the pluck ID to get our list of IDs, and you can see that that works, and it yields the exact same query as we had initially when we ran the separate query plucking the ID. So let's get our users again, we join our status, and then we can call where the status is, and then on the statuses, we can search where the ID is equal to our status active and the pluck ID. And we can call dot size to see that we still get our 10 users. But notice that this does make the two queries because we have our status active pluck ID, which is one query, and then we have this outside query. And really, you wouldn't have to join the statuses because we have our IDs. We could just search on the status ID on the user. However, taking this, let's see if we can clean this up a little more. So instead of calling the where, you can actually call something called merge. And with the merge, we can reference our status.active, and this is going to do essentially the same single query. And because we are able to chain that merge query within our console, let's try to go ahead and add the scope under our user. So we have our scope, and we'll call this the active. We'll create another lambda, and we'll call the joins status, just like we did before, and then we'll call the merge, and we'll reference our other scope on the status. And going back to our console, we'll call the reload, just to pick up our new code, and then we can call the user.active. And you can see that this is calling the same query as it was before, except before we were calling the count, so it wasn't selecting all the records. However, if we were to call the user active, and then this size, you can see that we're getting the same query as we were before, and now we just had this user.active. So this is much cleaner, and for the most part, it's pretty clear what it's expecting to do. So next, let's look at some of the messages. So we'll set our user equals to the user first, and then if we look at our user messages, because a user has many messages, we can see that this user has four messages. If we pluck the red column, we can see that the user has three unread messages, and then one of the messages has already been read. So if we want to find all of the messages that the user has that is unread, then we could do something like user.messages, where read is equal to false. And this works, and we can also get dot size to see that we have our three unread messages. However, again, we may use this throughout the application, especially if we are using it in something like a header, where we can show the user that they have X number of unread messages. So instead, I would like to create a scope so we don't have to keep typing the where red is equal to false. Just in case if we had to refactor this sometime down the road, we would only have to edit it in one place instead of multiple. So in our message model, we'll create a scope and we'll just call this the unread. And within our lambda, we'll call the where, where the red is equal to false. And likely we would also probably want one eventually for the red messages where the red is equal to true. So reloading the application, we can get our user equal to the user.first, and then we can do our user messages.unread. And if we get the size on this, you see that we still have our three messages. So let's say we want to look at our user active. So this is gonna return all of our active users, and we have 10 of them. However, let's say if we also want to find all of the active users' unread messages. 
So this gets a bit more complicated because now we are chaining on three different models. We have our users that we're looking up and then we have our status model where we need to search where the users are active based on the status active attribute. And then we need to scope on to the messages to see where the messages have any unreads. So this is actually very simple. So then we can chain in with our active and then call the joins and then the messages and we can merge the message unread. So very similar to what we were doing before, but now we're just chaining it a bit deeper. And then we can check the size of this and we're going to get the 37 messages. So this is getting the count of unread messages for active users. Because remember, we only have 10 users and of those 10 users, they have 37 unread messages. If we were to just check the messages unread dot size, we'll see that we're getting a much larger number because this is including the inactive users as well. And with this, we can also create another scope on our users. And with this scope, we could probably call this the unread messages. And we would just simply copy and paste in what we had before. And you can see that this looks very similar to our active scope. So reloading the console, we can then call the user active to get our active users and then the unread messages. And if we call dot size on there, we would still expect the 37. And there's also a couple of other cool little tricks that I like to show. So let's say if we have our active users, you can then call scoping on here. And with the scoping, you can pass in a block and you can do something like user dot last. If we call end on here, you can see that this returns the user ID number 17. However, if we were simply to call user dot last, you can see that it returns the user ID 20. So with the scoping, this user last is in reference to what we have up here with the user active. But in the scoping, we pass in our block and then we're able to perform some other kind of query. And let's say the unread messages is something for a particular user or for any user where it is something that is always going to be called. So throughout your application, you are just using this everywhere and it might not be messages. It could be something else. However, it's something where whenever you're pulling up a user or referencing a user, you're always going to reference also the unread messages. So there's something in Rails called the default scope. So with the default scope, you're able to include something. So you can do something like includes the messages, and then you can do something like the unread messages. So if we reload our console, we can do the user dot first, and then you can see that we get our user, and then we're also getting all of the messages, and it broke it out because we have eager loaded the messages as well. So if we have our user dot first, but then we do the messages, and if we get the first message, you can see that we still have just those two queries read because we have eager loaded all of the messages in with the same query call. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.